Well, an Empire 8 matchup, one of the last of the regular season for both these teams. And Ithaca trying to get its second conference win of the season. They lead by four after one half of basketball. Alongside K.J. Hammond, I'm Phil Newman. And the guy we haven't heard a lot from for Elmira is Josh Keyes, who hit two threes in the first half, but hasn't hit anything since. Yeah, Josh Keyes is going to have to find his touch or find other players and distribute if he's going to want this Soaring Eagles team to actually get the lead back. There's Keyes on the wing. There's Cassidy. Open jumper. He got it. And he got a good look. And a timeout called by Elmira. Under two minutes left. It's a two-point game. So back and forth we go between these two. There it is. Keyes, like I said, finding an open man to Cassidy right at the free throw line. Warm-up jump shot for him, too. Cassidy on the game, 12 points in just 17 minutes. He had foul trouble in the first half. He has four on the game. But he's been able to still contribute with 12 points for this soaring Eagles team. So, KJ, we enter the last two minutes of the game. Ithaca has held this you know, two-possession, one-possession lead for the majority of the game. How do they keep it? till the end of this one and pick up their second conference win. I think Jim Mullen said it best it's just going to be defense. Who's going to lock down the defender, the man across for them? Who's going to get the block shot, the strip steal? Who's going to grab that rebound off the one uh, offensive possession? You can't let second chance points get you and beat you here. So after an Elmira timeout, they're going to come in full court pressure. But now they back off a little bit, and Bevan will go up against Dibble to get it across half court. Ithaca trying to keep this a two-possession game, but they'll need a basket to do that. Wasting time all the while as we come up on 10 seconds to shoot. And Bevan will get a screen from Sweeney. Five on the shot clock. Mitchell, foul, it's a block called inside against Josh Keyes, so Mitchell will go to the line to shoot two. That one honestly could have gone either way. Frank Mitchell leaning his shoulder in against the smaller defender, Josh Keyes, and giving him his fourth. Well, you make the call at home whether his feet were set or not, but bottom line is Mitchell's at the line, and you have to think kind of a perfect possession for Ithaca. They wind the shot clock all the way down and then get a good free throw shooter to shoot two free throws. And just as I say that, Mitchell <laughs> short on the first. Like I said, this is where you got to make your free throws. Each one becomes more pressure packed and more important. He's 70% on the year, and on the night, one for four. So, has 14 points, though, and now make it 15. Mitchell extends the lead to three. Here's Cassidy. See if they go back to him as he's scored the last couple of baskets for the Soaring Eagles. They're looking inside for him. Randolph has had success in the second half as well. But it's Cassidy against Gitto, the foul, and he almost got that one to go. The Elmira bench was ready to explode, but he'll get two shots at the free throw line. And even though he didn't make it, I'm sure they'll find with the output. Stop the clock, get a good, three, excuse me, good free throw shooter to the line, and knock him down one by one. You see the isolation matchup down low, and Cassidy has continually had success as Sweeney will check back into the game and the 86% free throw shooter Cassidy knocks down the first. This is a guy who led the team with 16 points per game as a sophomore and leads the team this year, or second on the team now with 16 points per game this year. He makes it a one point game, a minute two to go. As the crowd comes to life here at Penn Light, Final minute of play, Bombers with a one-point lead. Bevan guarded by Dibble, as he has been all second half closely. Dibble, foul called against Bevan. Offensive is called as Jake Metcalf, who we've barely seen in this second half, stepped in to take the charge. Yeah, Ithaca got it called their way last time, and now it's against them this time. The charge call is giving the possession arrow back to the Elmira Soaring Eagles. Second time this half, we've seen Bevan get called for an offensive foul, 
And now Cassidy back into the game. We'll see if he tries to give Elmira the lead, down one. That's Randolph to the hoop. Foul called, another charge. Wow, Messino stand, stood in there. The basket fell, but it didn't matter. Offensive call against Neil Randolph and Elmira. None too happy about that call. Joe Messino, the freshman, showed a little smarts on that one, doing the right thing and not jumping, but setting his feet, standing strong and taking it to the chest. So let's take another look at that one. Messino, does he get his feet set? Yeah, maybe he did. I'm not an official, so I won't attempt to make that one, I'm KJ. Not gonna, but I'm not going to argue against the referee either. So as it stands, 33 and a half seconds left. One point lead for Ithaca, who has the ball in their own backcourt. So obviously both teams, Elmira setting their defense and Ithaca trying to set up a play to get the ball inbounds. But the shot clock is off. So do you start fouling right away? Both teams in the double bonus, or do you try and get a steal first? I honestly don't see why the Elmira soaring Eagles coach is not telling them to foul right now. Play the hack a shot game. You're going to foul their big man. Maybe they go to the line, make one of two. As you can see, they haven't been hitting their free throws as of lately as they have in the first half. So hack them, send them to the free throw line, get the ball back, and then you could get to two for one there. Ithaca, as a team, 21 of 29 tonight at the line. And Frank Mitchell, despite being the leading scorer for Ithaca, just two for five at the line. Sweeney, the other leading scorer with 16 points. He's six of eight at the line. So all good free throw shooters on the floor right now for head coach Jim Mullins and the defensive crew, including Jake Metcalf, who took that charge on the Bombers' last possession in for Elmira. Mitchell gets it into Bevin, and there's that trap. They get it back to Mitchell. And is that who they want to foul? They trap him, timeout is called. Good call, good call by Jim Mullins taking a timeout. He's trapped on the baseline. They don't want to foul, so you just call a timeout and reset. So there you saw the strategy. We're going to go for the steal first. If we can't get that, then maybe we foul, but they force him into a trap situation, and Mitchell, the senior, has to call timeout. There you see the women's basketball team. The Bombers getting set to take on Elmira about 20 minutes after the completion of this game. And Ithaca currently tied for first in the Empire 8. 10 and one record in the conference. Going up against fourth place Elmira. About 20 minutes after this game, but we're gonna have a good finish here as Mitchell will inbound for the Bombers. Gets it into Messino and a quick foul by Matt Newell. And that'll send the freshman Messino to the line to shoot two big free throws. Maybe that's who they wanted to get the ball to. The freshman put all the pressure on him. See how he handles the situation. He shoots 77% there on the, on the season, but you know, big spot for a freshman. The last time these two teams played, it was a very similar game. Joey Ross hit two big free throws with 13 seconds left to put Ithaca up by three. And it looks like maybe a little blood on the jersey of, or on the hands of Joe Messino. So the official, what a time to tell him, <laughs> go over there and get bandaged up. Yeah, basically, no, can't shoot the free throw right now, young man. Biggest free throws of your life, and you have to wait a couple more seconds. Icing them. So I guess if there's any relief for Messino, it's that it's, two shots because they're in the double bonus. But big free throws nonetheless. Short on the first. That's the nerves right there, Phil. When you see the ball hit the front of the rim, it's the nerves. You can't get the ball up over it. You're losing not enough legs, and your arms are really, really soft right now. So just got to shake it off and breathe. Offensive lineup for Elmira back in. Cassidy in the three-point shooter keys. Short on both and rebounded by Vogel, and now Elmira can take the lead with a bucket. 20 seconds to play. They get it to Cassidy, who's been their man for the entire second half, and a timeout called. Randy Torgalski wants to talk it over. 13.7 seconds to play and a one-point lead for Ithaca. Messino, who's been great at the line all year, can't hit on those two free throws. But you can't just put it on a Messino here. You got to put it on the bombs as a whole not being able to close out this game 
Listen, if you would have had Frank Mitchell hit both his free throws, Tom Sweeney would have hit both his free throws, this wouldn't even be a contest, arguably a one-point game. And that's been the story all season long. You see the Bombers not being able to close out games correctly. They maybe it's due to lack of experience or lack of seniority, but it's late game situations like this. You've got to know what to do and how to get the lead or keep it. Well, obviously the offensive unit will be on the floor for Elmira, but the question is who gets the shot? Neil Randolph leads all scores for Elmira with 23 points, but Chris Cassidy has been the man in the second half with 14 points. They're also going to have Josh Keyes on the floor. He's the three-point shooter, just six points. All of them came early in the first half, but he's a 1,000-point scorer, so even though things haven't gone his way tonight, you know, you give him an open look, maybe he hits it and knocks it down. Yeah, but I think they're going to Chris Cassidy. They're definitely looking at him because they've been going to him the whole second half. They've been putting him in on offense, switching him off on defense just for this, for him to have the last second chance, and maybe he'll get to the free throw line. He's 6 of 6, 100%, and if he makes it, like you said, he's shooting 86%. It's just a one-point game or a tie game there. So we'll see how quickly Elmira goes to the hole. 13.7 to go. Here they come. Here's Cassidy. Five seconds now, wide oh. open underneath. Dibble got it with two and a half to go on this communication. Ithaca won't call a timeout. Here's Bevin. A Hail Mary, he no good, and Elmira wins it as the entire bench storms the floor. Their Empire 8 tournament hopes are still alive. And that's just really unfortunate for the Ithaca Bombers right there. Lack of communication, not knowing where your man is, everybody looking for Chris Cassidy, and then Dibble gets the ball and the easy open layup to take the lead and win the game. What an unbelievable finish, Tyler Dibble the junior is the hero with his ninth and 10th points, winning it for Elmira, 69 to 68. Ironically